We would like to welcome you to this special presentation where a pertinent question will be addressed. That question, is there an answer to world problems? Well, if this is the first time you've joined us, we would like to uh, have a very, very special warm welcome for you. And if you don't know much about us, we're a community of believers whose faith is established on the truths that are revealed through the Bible. Before we get into the subject tonight, I would like to offer a prayer to God and dedicate this time to him. So if you just uh, bow your heads or close your eyes. Our almighty and powerful Father in heaven, we thank you for this opportunity to consider the challenges around us and to centre our minds on how we can live in this era in a way that pleases you. We ask that you bless this time and that you may open our hearts to hear the message. The world is in deep distress and we know many are seeking answers. We pray that you will strengthen believers around the world so that they might share their faith with those around them. And through that, answers can be found. We give all glory to you and it's through your son Jesus that we offer this prayer. Amen. The presentation tonight will be given by Sid Levette. I've known Sid for some years and have always known him to be extremely thorough. He has also had, for many, many years, a keen interest in events that shape the world and has co-authored a book called The Sign of His Coming. Before asking Sid to present to us, he has asked me to read the following passage from the Bible. So it's from a book called Matthew, which is the beginning of the New Testament. And we're going to read from Matthew chapter 24. And we'll read verses 1 to 8. And then we'll read a couple of verses from the end of the chapter. Then Jesus went out and departed from the temple. And his disciples came up to show him the buildings of the temple. And Jesus said to them, Do you not see all these things? Assuredly, I say to you, not one stone shall be left here upon another that shall not be thrown down. Now as he sat on the Mount of Olives, the disciples came to him privately, saying, Tell us, when will these things be? And what will be the sign of your coming and of the end of the age? And Jesus answered and said to them, Take heed that no one deceives you. For many will come in my name, saying, I am the Christ, and will deceive many. And you will hear of wars and rumours of wars. See that you are not troubled, for all these things must come to pass, but the end is not yet. For nation will rise against nation, and kingdom against kingdom, and there will be famines, pestilences, and earthquakes in various places. All these are the beginnings of sorrows. And later in the chapter, we read from verses 29 to 31. Immediately after the tribulation of those days, the sun will be darkened and the moon will not give its light. The stars will fall from heaven and the powers of the heavens will be shaken. Then the sign of the Son of Man will appear in heaven. And then all the tribes of the earth will mourn, and they will see the Son of Man coming on the clouds of heaven with power and great glory. And he will send his angels with a great sound of a trumpet, and they will gather together his elect from the four winds from one end of heaven to the other. So we ask that if throughout this presentation you have questions, please contact us via our website cce.org.au. Answers will be posted on the website in the coming days. I would now like to hand over to Sid Levette. Thanks, Sid. Thank you, Mark, and thank you all for joining with us for this presentation. 
it's quite likely that you've assumed that that uh, topic of is there an answer to world problems was specifically selected because of the coronavirus situation, but it was actually chosen some months ago and put on the, on the schedule for topics. And of course, the coronavirus aspect has really just added another, another layer to a world that has a lot of problems anyhow. So there were many issues we could discuss in the absence of coronavirus, and we're certainly not going to focus on that. The world has been facing many difficult conditions for quite some period of time. Not all of them are apparent to us in the Western world. We have to see a lot of problems, but many of the world's problems face people in other countries. And of course, when we're looking at the world situation, we need to consider what is the global outcome. So we'll have a look at a broad range of issues and also, most importantly, see what the Bible says about that. Now, I don't know if you'd noticed, but a word of choice that's bobbed up quite a lot through this present year is the word unprecedented. It was used regularly when the media were commenting on the Australian bushfires that really kept everybody focused, not just here, but across the world, it had enormous coverage. And the word often described was unprecedented fires. Another one that we may not have noticed so much in Australia, but it was particularly the case in, uh, in overseas, where the United Kingdom early in this year had an enormous flooding through a lot of towns that didn't always get flooded when they had that problem. And their commentary was often preceded with the word unprecedented. But then the situation in the world got worse, so you have to argue what kind of adjective can you apply to the current situation of coronavirus? So let's have a look at some of the other issues that are around as well in addition. But first of all, coronavirus, of course, is the, the focus of the world at the moment. We've become quite familiar with seeing scenes such as this out of hospitals in numerous countries across the face of the earth with a rather daunting answer often given by the medical people that many of those who go into intensive care do not come out the other end alive, a major problem across the globe. We've also been intrigued, I'm sure, by scenes we've seen of empty cities, quite uncanny. We have central New York here with barely a person out and about, which is extremely unusual. We have London, is on Westminster Bridge. If you've ever been to that end of London, it's normally crowded with massive amounts of tourists and traffic around that area. Quite empty, it's quite an uncanny scene. And it's been much the same in Melbourne. Here we have our city here with barely a person walking around. So quite an amazing state of affairs has occurred in a period of a very short period of months. We've also been taken back and in some cases rather horrified with the economic consequences. I'm sure we've all been quite daunted to see massive queues of people putting their name down to receive unemployment benefits because their jobs disappeared almost overnight. And the economic predictions are even more daunting. There's many, many of these, so we won't be looking at too many of them. It'll make the point anyhow. Jerome Powell, the chairman of the US Federal Reserve, said that economic activity will drop at an unprecedented rate in the second quarter. Again, the word unprecedented comes to the fore. And he mentions that the damage inflicted on the economy could be especially painful for the most vulnerable. And we are, of course, already seeing that. And there's been very similar predictions from the Australian Reserve Bank and also throughout many uh, economic uh, ministers in the countries of Europe, with some of them being, expecting quite significant drops in the economy and ongoing unemployment. One of the issues being, of course, that there's a fear that a lot of companies won't come out the other end of this and that will impact on unemployment. So it's the, the current issue. In many ways, though, it, the world problems are not a surprise to Bible believers. Now, that might sound a strange observation, and certainly we had to make it clear that nobody was expecting an event called coronavirus because we don't have that level of specifics. But those who are familiar with the record of the Bible are not staggered at the fact that in this day and age the world is facing enormous problems. And so coronavirus is really only one of a growing list of major global challenges. Mark read to us sections from Matthew 24, and we'll base a lot of our scriptural quotes from that. 
This is a time when the disciples asked Jesus, how would they identify his return? Tell us, when will these things be, and what will be the sign of your coming and of the end of the age? So a very specific question, and the answers are quite clear, even though we don't have the exact detail of the events, but we get a broad range of problems that are not unexpected for those who have read these chapters. He speaks in verse 6 of Matthew 24. You will hear of wars and rumours of wars. See that you are not troubled, for all these things must come to pass, but the end is not yet. And we've seen across the centuries, of course, enormous wars, but in the current time frame, we've all been stunned, I'm sure, by the, the impact in Syria as a, an example of one of the worst around at the moment. Stunned also at the, the hardness of mankind, where the leader of the country can inflict this on his own people, damaging and or destroying their cities, people fleeing elsewhere, and many millions in refugee camps. A staggering impact and a very complex situation with, we won't go into all that detail, but very difficult, and we find man's organisations, particularly United Nations, unable to resolve the situation. We've had that dreadful situation that still continues in Yemen, really based around a power struggle between the Saudis and the Iranians, and the people in the middle suffer the dreadful consequences. And again, mankind struggles to reach a resolution as peace treaties and the like are forsaken very quickly. So these are just a couple of the, the bigger issues on that, that, that level. And in Matthew, the record continues that for nation will rise against nation and kingdom against kingdom, and there will be famines, pestilences and earthquakes in various places. Now again, the, the number of them and the exact timing is not given, but we can see a general picture being developed. Famines are occurring at a great rate. There's dreadful problems in many African countries at the moment, and I noticed again the word unprecedented got into this one in, in this month from the United Nations Food and Agricultural Organisation. Locust plague in Kenya is an unprecedented threat to food security across Africa. And as if they don't have enough problems there to lose their crops is cataclysmic in many ways. Uh, and of course these are nations that also have other problems of uh, armed gangs uh, making life extremely difficult and very treacherous for many people. We've seen earthquakes around the place and we know of the enormous impact they have and of course there's no warning they just suddenly occur and there's much loss of life and huge damage to cities and even major nations with a lot of resources really struggle to solve the problem and deal with the rebuild and the casualties and we wonder at what stage this will get much worse as uh, perhaps the, the west coast of the United States or large areas of Japan are, are exposed to these major problems. Continuing with Matthew down to verse 21, for then there will be great tribulation such as has not been since the beginning of the world until this time no, nor ever shall be, and unless those days were shortened, no flesh would be saved. But for the elect's sake, those days will be shortened. So again, we don't have an exact time frame there, do we? But we know that problems will enhance. They will get worse. There is potential it will get much worse than coronavirus, and that's, that's very concerning, but there is, a, there is a ray of hope at the end of all this, and we'll come to that. For those who don't believe and have no other alternative in life, this is a great concern, and we do uh, wonder what are the extra bits to come, and as it does indicate that it could get worse. But let's consider where we are with the present situation. Another phenomena of recent uh, times, this was over the last several months leading up to coronavirus, and the coronavirus has shut a lot of this down, but I don't know if you had noticed, but there was an enormous range of social unrest in a lot of countries. Uh, examples there such as Venezuela, Chile, Argentina, Lebanon, Iraq. This photo could have been taken in any one of them. It was very similar to what was occurring. An example of mankind saying, look, I really have no confidence in those that rule us. My life is a misery. I'm going to take to the streets in the hope that something will change. Generally, nothing changes, but they try, they try and hope. What is interesting is that in each of those nations, and no doubt other nations where people would be concerned about these, the people have taken to the streets because of failing economies, high unemployment, massive inequality, 
and extensive corruption. And again, one could ask, is there a solution to that? Can mankind resolve it? And generally, not at all. Sometimes the leadership of these countries changes, but normally what occurs is another group of the, what they call the political elite, take over, and for the average person in the street, life doesn't change at all. Part of the problem is this matter of corruption, and it's amazing in how many countries the rulers feel that they are quite obliged to help themselves to the, the nation's assets. It's quite a huge issue, and I'm not too sure how clear this will be for you, but this is an interesting uh, slide here of the, an organisation called Transparency International, which a lot of governments obtain regular reports from, and many uh, global corporations utilise it as well for advice on how bad are some of the countries they'd like to move into. We won't spend a lot of time on it, but just the situation is that the, the darker the red on the nation, the worse is the level of corruption. And so you can see there are not, not a lot of nations in the world that are not marked in red to some way. And it's quite intriguing that those nations that are not so dark coloured are those that many people try and flee to. If they can get out of their country, they go to the others. They're often heading to, to England, to Northern Europe, North America and Australia or New Zealand. It's where people like to get to, to get out of their country. So major global problems that are almost unresolvable with corruption at huge levels through these places where you cannot trust anyone in charge and often huge economic distress to the people and the leaders living in great wealth. There will be a resolution to that. And I'll partly jumping ahead here, but I thought it's useful to put this in at this point in time, that the prophet Isaiah gives us summaries and picture descriptions of a time when the Lord Jesus will have returned and the problems of the earth will be resolved. And Isaiah 11 verse 4, says, With righteousness he will judge the needy, with justice he will give decisions for the poor of the earth. And we see there that massive contrast with that schedule of areas of in intense corruption. I mentioned about people wanting to get out of certain countries and go to others. We've seen this problem of mass migration. These are the ones moving into Europe. Hundreds of thousands of people wanting to move away from the country that they live, putting up with huge privations and misery because the country in which they live is so bad, life is not worth living, they figure. A lot of these are from the Middle Eastern areas that are in, in, have in warfare, particularly Syria and Iraq. Uh, but many others come from those African nations that really struggle. And then there's the, there's quite an incredible photograph here of the thousands upon thousands of people who tried to flee a whole range of South American countries to get into the United States before the border was closed off. And again, it's the same situation. Their, their country is so bad, it's worth taking just a few belongings that you can carry just head to the road, sleep outdoors for nights as you try and move along and hope you'll get into a better nation. So not a great state for the world at all, is it? For some of these people, coronavirus is not their big issue in life at all. It's just getting by on the daily basics. There's also this other insuperable problem for the world of the multi-millions of people who have to spend their life in refugee camps. This particular one here is that uh, one where the people who have fled Myanmar, the Rohingya, living in, now in Bangladesh. Total misery there, but there's millions of people living in these conditions around the world, again, with no resolution and no likelihood that their life will ever change. They are committed to this, apart from a very few who get access to other countries, most of them will spend their life here unless they can resolve the problems in their own countries and they can return. But that does not look very promising for many people. And then there's the problem of what people call the rogue nation, such as North Korea, obsessed with military development. And we're well aware of the, the risk that could come out of one of those nations. And we've seen, of course, the development in China. Well, that's had huge profile of late, of course, but being the most likely source of the whole problem of coronavirus and many political arguments taking place about that. But general acceptance that has come from there in some form and been hidden for some period of time. What it's also led to, though, of course, is a realisation that the world has become very dependent on supplies out of China. 
been fairly evident to anybody who looked into it, but a lot of countries and many global companies had closed their eyes to the supply chain risk of China, and now they've found that this is a big problem. What is also interesting about it is this massive military growth of China, which is clearly going to create a great problem for the world. They're not going to sit there doing nothing, one would assume. The interesting aspect is, of course, is that the Western world has funded China's growth, that this massive military growth is essentially paid for by the West buying their goods out of China. So the whole world, as we know it, has bought this in many ways for China and now runs the risk of, well, what's going to happen with all this that they have? So again, another great concern for the world with no immediate solution. We won't spend too much time on missiles and military, but just to again make the point that the world once again is gearing up for escalating the number of missiles they have. Russia has hugely expanded theirs and America is following suit. And so again, we put this down as one of the world's great worries of what happens if they all let loose on these. And of course, that may well fit in that we're looking at in Matthew 24 there of times of great trouble. And if God did not shorten those days, mankind would not survive. And it may well be that that is alluding to these sort of issues that if people fire off these missiles with nuclear heads on them, that there'll be dreadful problems on the face of the earth. And unfortunately, at the moment, it, it looks as if there is an escalation in the development of such missiles. It's not only the New Testament, as in Matthew, that talks about issues at the end of the world, and we don't have time to go through the details of the prophet Daniel, but he was talking about a time of the end when he goes through the history of many nations. Then he comes to a verse where he's talking at that conclusion, said there will be a time of trouble such as never has been since there was a nation till that time. So again, emphasising difficulties, but there is a hope at the end of it. And many of those who sleep in the dust of the earth shall awake, some to everlasting life, some to shame and everlasting contempt. So that's talking about the return of Jesus and the resurrection, which is a topic we cannot expand on. We have to just touch on some of these in this particular presentation. We've also got these massive concerns of climate issues, there's African drought and there's others. That again is specifically mentioned uh, as a, a solution that will occur at the return of Jesus and in God's kingdom we're well aware of the Australian drought that was the main contributor to the broad range of destruction with the bushfires earlier this year. And it's interesting also that's specifically mentioned as one of the issues that will be resolved in God's kingdom at the return of Christ. Isaiah 35, that the desert and the parched land will be glad. The wilderness will rejoice and blossom. The burning sand will become a pool and the thirsty ground bubbling spring. So once again, we can see that one of the very specific problems of the world has a very specific answer. Just at a completely different level, we have in the throughout the world in just recent decades a huge escalation in the taking of drugs with people in despair. They take to these things, it ruins their life, causes much economic distress in countries, huge escalations in crime, and it's a trend that the world really struggles to wind back. It just continues relentlessly. We've probably seen statistics and the huge escalation in the use of ice in Australia. And again, it, we just put that in as one of the examples of social problems, immense social problem with no ready solution. Money arising out of people's despair and no hope. So I'll take these and I, I feel good for a while, but then addiction comes and their life is ruined. Now I mentioned that a lot of this resolution will take place at the return of Christ and again that is a separate topic which we do deal with at times from here but to touch on it at the moment we'll take just one quote it's from the book of Hebrews chapter 9 verse 28 so Christ having been offered once to bear the sins of many will appear a second time quite positive statement a second time not to deal with sin but to save those who are eagerly waiting for him so there's a good outcome in this and the Bible regularly talks about that return of Christ. Now, what I should say though is, and you might well have thought of this, you might be saying, well, how do we know that we're in the time when these problems will occur? And that's a very good question because there's certainly been much worse problems in some periods in the past, but that section in Matthew is not really a, a history of all the problems of the world. It's saying these are the problems that will occur 
in the last days. So what are the, the last days? Well, the last days could only commence once God's people, Israel, were back in their land. That's a key to the return of Christ and the establishment of his kingdom. So we can establish that we are in that general time frame. And it's important we do that because it's quite true that there have been massive problems in prior times. Just quickly, because this again is a separate topic, we need to get it clear because it, 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 it hits the actual time spot for us. God said that he would scatter his people, Deuteronomy 4 verse 27, they'd be scattered among the peoples and the nations. He also said he would bring them back, a huge prophecy, Jeremiah 23, I will gather the remnant of my flock out of all the countries where I've driven them and I will bring them back to their fold and they shall be fruitful and multiply. And then he adds this important part because it, it precedes the return of Christ. And I will raise up for David a righteous branch and he shall reign as king. So that return is critical to the return of Christ and the time frames of the time of the end. The Jews did return and we could discuss that at length but we won't. It's not our intention tonight but just we need to put it in there to show that this is what triggers the time frame. They returned they became a nation again in 1948 and there's been huge development since. An arid, desolate area was converted into great cities and intense agricultural land. So a huge redevelopment there, which is a precursor to the return of Christ. And when these things occur, further in the in Matthew, in chapter 24, verse 30, then the sign of the Son of Man will appear in heaven. So the then is, after all those events he's talking about, it says then there will be this sign and all the tribes of the earth will mourn. And again we get this reference to the return of Christ. They will see the Son of Man coming on the clouds of heaven with power and great glory. So all these events point to that return. Again, no exact time frame, but it's very important to know we are in that general time frame when that return can occur. Going back to Daniel, he also commented on these things about the last nations on the earth. <clears throat> in those days, in these latter days, these kings, the God of heaven, will set up a kingdom which shall never be destroyed. And the kingdom shall not be left to other people. It shall break in pieces and consume all these kingdoms, and it shall stand forever. So that is our hope, this return of Christ and the establishment of this kingdom clearly specified by the prophets of old and in the New Testament clearly also. So this has been a, a snapshot of problems in the world, somewhat a rather brief snapshot also of the return of Israel to set up that time frame. And uh, briefly we've mentioned a whole range of issues in scripture which we would expand at length if we wanted to discuss our way through those. But it's not our point for tonight, it's to set the scene for there are difficult times, but there is a solution at the end. So we had Daniel with times of trouble and issues. There's Matthew 24 and Luke 21 talking about wars and turmoil and natural disaster and people fearing for the future, and that's quite applicable to the current era. People wondering, what, how do we get out of this? The prophets, particularly Jeremiah and Ezekiel, clearly talk about that Israel would have to be re-established uh, re in their land, and then many verses, but we're restricting it to... Only one this evening of Hebrews 9 verse 28 that Christ is to return to reign on earth and to restore all things. So, so that are, these are the keys for us really. The Not unexpected at all that there was a broad range of problems. The Bible said that would be the case. It gave us a general time frame for them. It points to the return of Christ and the establishment of a kingdom. The, um, just to go through those, we'll put them all on interest of time. The, particularly the prophet Isaiah, but a range of others, just give us, uh, again, snapshots of key issues in this kingdom. And you can readily see what a contrast they are to the problems on the earth. We'll have God's ways being taught. There'll be peace. There'll be no oppression of people. And for many, that's a huge issue in some of the terrible areas where they're oppressed. There'll be security, righteous judgment and equality in place of corruption, no fear of danger at all, and an abundance of food rather than difficult situations with drought and shortages. So that's the overall view of this kingdom that will come. The Lord Jesus Christ is to return to set that up and it will be preceded by 
problems. Now, as I say, we cannot say exactly when that is, but the world is heading that way and it fits that general scenario of the, the Bible. It really sets out that these things will occur. So we leave you with that to consider. What we have ready before us is, it, you can go whatever way you like on these. If you put your trust in the world, we have seen it's really like a house of cards, that a few events and it crumbles. It can readily unravel. I mean, who would have perceived that in two or three months the world shut down with a, with a virus, massive economic flow from it, major problems. Instead of that house of cards, put our trust in the house of God. Let us go to the mountain of the Lord, to the house of the God of Jacob. Thank you. As you can see on the screen, if you do have questions or comments, please use the contact tab on the, uh, the website www.cce.org.au. So we'd like to thank Sid for his presentation and um, certainly you know, the word unprecedented is very, very relevant. Um, when you think about history, there are many instances where you can say major events have, have shaped the world, world wars. Um, but I think the current challenge, the impact has really been universal. It's not localised, but truly affects the whole world in a profound way. From a health perspective, economics, global mobility, trade, travel, and of course, you know, our access to news and the spread of news through social media. Sid has shared what we know is the answer to world problems. And if you'd like to learn more about our God and his son Jesus and the opportunity to be saved, then please contact us. We'd love to connect with you and you can do that by using the uh, contact tab at our website. We'd like to thank you for joining us and again remind you to log any questions or comments. Uh, let's close this time together with a word of uh, prayer to our God. So if you just uh, bow your heads or close your eyes. Our Father in heaven, we thank you for this time that we could spend this evening contemplating the answer to world problems. We know that that answer relies solely on you and in your deliverance through your son Jesus. Father, we ask that you comfort those who might be in pain and are struggling to find answers we ask you to touch their hearts so that they may be open to your word. Father, we look forward to a day when there will be peace on earth and you establish your kingdom on earth through Jesus. And it's through him that we offer this prayer. Amen.